It's called um, Hate to Love Nickelback. It's mm-hmm. on Netflix. Mm-hmm. I turned it on thinking this is going to be garbage. I worked for a rock station in the height of Nickelback's Fame. early 2000s. Yeah, early to yeah. mid-2000s. We couldn't get away from Nickelback on our station. <laughs> it was just the way it was. It was the overplaying of Nickelback that causes me to be kind of cynical about the band. However, then watching the documentary, I have a little bit of a different viewpoint. Now, I was in radio as well back when they were at their peak. The testing about the music kept coming back positive. So we kept playing them. true. Somebody was liking them. We had a research department at that time at our radio station. We kept saying, should we keep this in a category? You know, like Photograph, for example. And we would would do call out research with listeners and be like, yes, we like this song. So we kept playing it. The same people making fun of it. I know when their windows were rolled up and they had the radio cranked up, they were listening to Nickelback because I I was. I just did the other day. I was. So was I. (laughs) So I've realized that I really am a Nickelback fan. Yes. Uh, Nickelback, of course, is a a Canadian band from a small town called Hannah, Alberta. Chad Kruger is the lead singer and his brother. And then they recruited um, Ryan Peake. Can't remember who their drummer was, but he's been replaced a few times. This is precisely the point, though, and I wanted to pick up on this point. All we know is Chad Kruger. That's the only name I remember. I hardly, I didn't even know that his brother was in the band until I watched the documentary and I'm Canadian. It's like Chad Kruger and Nickelback is how we used to say it on the radio too. A lot of people introduced him that way. Yeah, I mean, he's the front man. He's the voice of the band. Writes I mean, a lot of songs. I think with, yeah, he is actually a prolific songwriter. In fact, yeah. I will say I like his songwriting, Tim. Oh, I do too. People a lot of like people the music. say it's formulaic, but it's a formula that works. A lot of people will also say that about Ed Sheeran, that he's formulaic. But guess what? I love Ed Sheeran. People still listen to him too. He's actually starting to become Sold the modern day remakes. Nickelback from my observations. A lot Ooh. of memes about Ed Sheeran. A lot of people talking trash about Ed Sheeran, yet everyone still listens to Ed Sheeran and everyone listens to Nickelback. The phrase was back in the day, they didn't sell 50 million albums to no one. And for arenas and stuff, like one of the b- biggest tours. Tour draws. They did a slow grind. They borrowed money from their family members. They put out a couple of albums that were like meh. When they signed, they had a lawyer But Mm -hmm. they didn't even have a manager for the band. Chad Kruger was filling in as lead singer, songwriter, manager. I mean, they were all wearing a lot of hats. Well, that was probably to their benefit, though. They didn't have a manager when they were just getting started. Because that's often when people get swindled with bad contracts and that kind of thing. I did Google their net worth. It's quite high. I would imagine. At least Chad Kruger's. They became so loved and then quite hated. Biggest mainstream band. They had this formulaic sound that still people loved. When you're you know? at the top, everyone's always picking on <laughs> right. you, right? And yeah. then Ryan Peake, the uh, guitar player, one of my favorite quotes of the whole documentary was, he said, nobody picks up a guitar to be the most hated band in the world. That's true. You know, you think, oh, well, they're making all this money. Who cares that they're getting hate? Everybody still cares when something that they've put their heart and soul in is being trashed. You know, I could be offered a lot of money. But if I was constantly told that I was bad at what I did, no matter how much I was making, and then I started to believe that myself, I wouldn't care about the money. I'd rather be thought of as good and believe myself to be good and make much less money than mm-hmm. the other way around. What I found myself doing, because they kept playing um, several of their songs throughout the documentary. Oh yeah, they wrote that. Oh, that song. Yeah. And Because yeah. I hadn't heard them. I overheard them. So many Canadians don't like them. And the reason why is because in Canada, For a lot of the local stations, by law, you have to play a certain amount of Canadian content. Uh And because they just happened to be the biggest band out there at the time, they got played a lot on a lot of radio stations. They kind of got overplayed in Canada. In America, too. (laughs) Now that distance and time has been put between me and Nickelback, watching the documentary and rehearing all their music, I downloaded like several albums of theirs now. And I told my husband, I go, I'm a closet nickel. Back fan, he goes, closet. And then he pulled up his phone. He's got every album. He loves them. He goes, I've always loved them. Why so, don't we just come out and admit we all love Nickelback at this point? Why are we trying to hide it? I am a converted Nickelback fan. If I wasn't before, I am now. You don't and have to hide it, Terry. You've been from day one. Hate They're to love Canadian. Nickelback, the documentary on Netflix. I say stream it. I say stream it as well. And restream their music too. You might find it actually it's better stands than you thought. The test of time. Yeah.